वेलकम टू न्यूज लॉन्ड्री छोटा हफ्ता फॉर द फुल एपिसोड सब्सक्राइब बिकॉज इट इज बिहाइंड द पे वॉल एंड ओनली सब्सक्राइबर्स गेट एक्सेस टू अनकट कंप्लीट कॉन्टेंट न्यूज लॉन्ड्री हफ्ता इज अ वीकली रैप of all that made the news all that didn't and all that should have and all that shouldn't have we agree we disagree we critique and occasionally we beat each other up but it's all good fun subscribe this is a news laundry podcast and you're listening to nl hafta अंग्रेज अपना लगान और न्यूज लॉन्ड्री अपना हफ्ता कभी नहीं छोड़ते आई एम मनीषा पांडे आई एम योर होस्ट फॉर दिस वीक एंड आई एम बैक फ्रॉम कर्नाटक इट वाज अ वेरी इवेंटफुल स्टिंट आई होप यू कॉट ऑल आवर रिपोर्ट्स ऑन आवर यूट्यूब चैनल ऑन द प्ले लिस्ट अनदर इलेक्शन शो We had some stellar stuff coming in also from our reporter Sumeda Mittal. She was in the central part of Karnataka. I was in the southern part, and Atul was in the coast. So we tried to cover the state as much as we can. I hope you guys liked our effort. Please check it out, and of course, please give us your feedback. Abhinandan is in London, so he's not going to be on this show. Uh, but you guys are going to meet him. Some of our subscribers have a London meet up uh, fixed with him. I hope you guys have a great fun time. and you say a lot of great things about us to him and you also <laughs> critique us as much as you want and give us some good feedback that he can bring back and that we can ponder on i have two fabulous guests with me today and some very exciting things to discuss some grim things to discuss but very essential discussions and a lot of stuff so before we begin our discussion and i give you the headlines and i introduce our amazing panel we have a very important announcement to make we have a new press freedom fund up This is our latest NL Sena project. The story on Indian media, the story about Indian media, I think, is the biggest story that needs to be told today. All of it, the propaganda and hate we see on television news, uh, stories about newsrooms across the country, how independent organizations are standing up to pressure, the kinds of pressures that we guys are working under. Uh, these stories are not just going to be about Delhi journalists, Bombay journalists, but we really want to go deep and look at different states, the state of media in different states, and uh, truly give you a good picture of press freedom in India. This fund will help us bring you deep dive reports. We'll give you commentaries and videos. Uh, we'll give you podcasts. So it's really going to be a three sixty degree view, a three sixty degree assessment on the state of Indian media. Remember, that's our prime role as News Laundry. we were born literally to talk about the media to talk about do news ki dhulai but also give you informative stuff uh, because i truly think media really shapes literally everything around you especially in an electoral democracy uh, the media defines a lot of things you should also check out abhinandan's uh, news since this time and tippani this time which is precisely about this topic but please check out this fund a press freedom fund uh, our deadline is may 31st so we need you guys to top it up please top it up please just log on to newsrunny.com/nlsena/pressfreedomfund check it out check up pitch out spend some time on it this weekend and please contribute we also have a legal fund up you know of the several legal battles that we are uh, engaged in at several fronts there's the it department case we have a bunch of cases with some channels also all this costs money uh, big organizations have all the money that you know at their disposal to slap us with these cases uh we are a small organization we do need your support to fight these legal battles so check out our nl legal fund also uh we've spent over 36 lakh so far in total legal fees so check that out and help us out if you'd like to now onwards to our discussion we have raman kirpal in the studio and we have two really amazing guests this week Sangeeta Barua Pisharoti in our studio welcome sangeeta thank you you're the national affairs editor at the wire and you're also the chief of bureau there apart from keeping an eye on national politics you cover the northeast for the wire and you won the inclusive media fellowship instituted by the center of development studies in 2011 and you also won the prestigious ramnath goenka excellence in journalism award for feature writing in 2017 thank you so much for taking out the time thank being with you. us here thank you glad to be here joining us on the phone line is somya rajendran hello somya hi manisha thank you so much for having me where are you joining us from I am based in Pune. Okay, great. She's an Indian author. She's written more than twenty-five books. Previously, she was the features editor with the News Minute. She writes on gender, culture, cinema. You've been awarded the Sahitya Academy Bal Sahitya Puraskar in two thousand fifteen for your novel "Mile Will Not Be Quiet." So, how when when was your first book? When did you write your first book? Because you got you won the Bal Sahitya Puraskar. Ah, uh, my first book was written, I think, sometime uh, in two thousand six. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 
that's amazing <laughs> and you've written this recent piece for the news minute on the kerala story which we're going to discuss because strangely kerala story made it to elections uh, we were in karnataka mm-hmm. and we heard the prime minister <laughs> say that you know in the last few days name kerala story and say this is a propaganda and this is a movie that you have to watch and stuff like that so there was an endorsement coming in from narendra modi so we'll discuss yeah, about I that i think you have to be very naive to believe that uh, the release date of the film had nothing to do with the elections so i think that was pretty deliberate you know in fact a lot of people were wondering about this and i was like oh, this is such a conspiracy theory i'm sure it's not so well oiled and well planned but <laughs> since so many bjp ministers and the prime minister are no less you know mentioned the movie i thought okay maybe everything is connected and i'll quickly get to the headlines now we had the exit polls come out uh, last evening most of the exit polls have predicted a hung assembly except there is access my india which is an india today poll and chanakya that have giving congress a clear majority uh, and they are saying that they may may as well cross the majority mark uh, so that's something to watch out for the results will be out on may 13th actually as you listen to this podcast the results are probably being will be rolling out because on saturday and uh, we have a really special collaboration you can watch the election results live with five independent news organizations all of us are coming together sangeeta your organization the yes, wire yes yes news laundry the news minute scroll right. and the caravan we're all coming together and we're going to be doing a youtube live starting 8 am in the morning on saturday you can catch us on all our youtube channels it's going to be streamed across all these five channels so you can watch us on your favorite channel <laughs> but you're going to have all of us discuss elections give you some numbers some perspective so hopefully it'll be fun and informative uh the toll due to violence between kuki and maithi communities in manipur this week rose to 62 Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachur on Monday remarked that the Manipur High Court does not have the power to direct the state government to consider designating a community as a scheduled tribe. We'll discuss this at length with Sangeeta. Amid the controversy surrounding the film The Kerala Story, the Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh government have made the film tax-free. Meanwhile, West Bengal CM Mamata Banerjee has said that we will ban the film. Several multiplexes in Tamil Nadu and Kerala pulled out from screening the film. Uh, Soumya has watched it, so we're going to discuss the film and we're going to discuss the politics around it. Constitution bench of the Supreme Court will deliver a verdict in two important cases today. The first one is on the dispute between warring factions of Shiv Sena, one which is led by Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde and the other by Uddhav Thakre. The second will be on whether central or Delhi government has administrative control over transfers and postings of civil servants in the national capital. So the Delhi versus LG fight. We'll see the Supreme Court weighing in on this. The Bharatiya Janata Party on Monday filed a complaint with the ECI against Sonia Gandhi for allegedly saying that Congress would not allow anyone to pose a threat to Karnataka's reputation, sovereignty or integrity during a poll rally at Hubli on May 6th. EC, EC backed out uh, in the end. They said it wasn't a notice. It was just a letter hmm. because they found uh, the BJP made a complaint hmm. and uh, they did not even read the complaint and they just served the notice. But later they found in her speech, she never used the word sovereignty. So Manisha, I just want to add quickly, you know, that uh, when the uh, the peace talks were started by the Modi government with the Nagas, they used the uh, word, uh, these expressions, shared sovereignty mm. in their document, official documents. So it is not that these these words are never used, you know. <laughs> It's yeah. not such a maligned word. Yeah, such a maligned word after all. And she didn't say it. That's yeah, that's also true. true. Yes. Kerala story entered this election. I was very surprised. Yes. because i you know at that point in fact when the pm began uh, some of his road shows and when we started seeing the central leadership really coming down there was manipur happening there was the jammu case that had happened there were wrestlers protesting in delhi and delhi police and wrestlers delhi police which is under the home minister you know there was a big uh, kind of a clash uh, where the wrestlers said that we were you know attacked by the delhi police so there's a lot lot of turmoil around the country but you had a lot of central leadership descend down to karnataka and uh, i was very surprised when the pm mentioned kerala story because by the end of it i was like okay now there's nothing to talk if kerala story's entered it but you've seen the movie so first tell us yes. what did you think of the movie uh, i thought it was it is very obvious that it is a blatant uh, propaganda film hmm. based on lies and misinformation and it is very clearly uh, you know modeled on the kashmir files uh in terms of generating shock value to the uh, viewers and what it seeks to achieve uh, through that 
So, um, right, I mean, the, the figure of 32,000 that has been so hotly debated and contested, the makers are yet to really justify how they got that number. They have quietly agreed to remove the 32,000 from the trailer. But what about the film? Because in the film, the 32,000, uh, you know, lie is very much there. And they, in fact, claim that 50,000 is the unofficial number, that 50,000 women from Kerala have crossed over to Syria and have become, you know, ISIS uh, terrorists. So um, it, it is so absurd that it, it's so difficult to decide where to begin with this film. Hmm. The film's point is to play into this fear that every social unit has, you know, be it the family, the community, caste, uh, religion, or everybody in a patriarchal society wants to control a woman's body. Hmm. And this is precisely what the film plays with because um, the film also has a character, a Christian man who was converted to Islam and, uh, you know, he becomes a fighter for the ISIS. And this is actually based on a true story from Kerala. There was a Christ- uh, there was a pair of uh, Christian brothers hmm. who were radicalized and converted to Islam and they did join the ISIS. But the film does not focus on the men at all. Its complete focus is on women who were uh, uh, who were supposedly you know trapped into uh, radical islam through love jihad now uh, this is uh, and, and the way the film uses graphic violence against women hmm. to make its point repeatedly so there are visuals of a pregnant woman being slammed against a table and then being raped by her husband there oh, are God. visuals of uh, isis terrorists raping uh, women who were sex slaves hmm. so all of this is to create, I mean, the point is simple. It is to create a sense of fear that their men are out to get our women. So no, there, no, there may be some indivi- individual stories, but to tarnish the entire community yes, by, by, by making film part of a conspiracy and with Kerala, the politicians, especially Kerala, especially Kerala, and the, where the politicians are talking about it in their rallies, in their, in their, on the public forum. And and the BJP ruled states are making it tax free, and uh, the other states are just withdrawing this movie. I mean, it has. I mean, that is something which is uh, needs to be other. And and very unfortunate it is. There's a very good movie which has been released this week. So this Mishra's Afwa, mm. okay, which people are not talking about, uh, and it has got very good uh, reviews. Reviews, but this is I think uh, whoever the I don't know I haven't read much about the director I think this he must have seen that Kashmir files made lot of waves and money so maybe this is one way of making and it's a hit more. Uh, the movie is ah, a hit so making yeah. more money so I don't think a ban really helps and uh, I am very unsure about the government interfering and telling people what they should be thinking what they should be watching hmm. uh, I'm against that so I think the only way to fight propaganda is to fight back with fight, uh, with facts. Uh, I know that, you know, a lot of people don't care. They're just going to watch this film. They're going to think it is true. But then I think we have to acknowledge that it, that it's easy appeal exists because these feelings are already there in society. Puran, right now, the current conflict is between Maitis and Cookies. Right. And just for the context of our listeners, 10% of Manipur is Valley. Yes. And about 90% is hills. So yeah. essentially, most of the landscape is hills. Metis are concentrated in the valley and the tribals, including Nagas, Kukis, are concentrated on the hills. Correct. And the current, uh, you know, the current uh, tensions between the two communities stem from two main reasons, as I understand it. One is the demand for a scheduled tribe status for Metis. Right. And the other is a fear among tribals uh, that are living in the hills that their land is being taken away and they're being evicted. Mm. So, Sangeeta, first, I think just for people to understand this, because I think the problem with mainlanders is also like everyone's Manipuri. Mm-hmm. I think we, you know, like yes. I, there's not even a distinction between states. So, forget the distinctions that exist within Manipur. Mm-hmm. So, there are these two communities, Maitis and Cookies in this particular case. I want to understand from you the grievances that these two communities have had, which led to such a massive explosion. What are the sort of major grievances yeah, you're right, you. actually. You know, when people talk about Manipuris, I mean, like recently somebody's asked me, she said, uh, you know, I always thought everybody's tribal there. What's yeah. wrong? You know, <laughs> I mean, Manipuris are not tribals. You mm-hmm. know, so it is just that. So anyway, it's a good question. Uh, what needs to be understood is that, uh, as you said, uh, geographically, Manipur is like a saucer 
where like the valley is the 10% of the land and surrounded by 90% of hills. And hills have been the traditional homeland of not just the Kuki Zomi group, but also the Nagas. So Nagas are not just in Nagaland. They are uh, spread across, say, some parts of Nag uh, Manipur and also Assam. And uh, these Kuki tribes, you know, though they don't like to be, to be called Kuki, they rather be addressed as Thadao because they say that Kuki was a term used by the British, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> for them. So, so they anyway, we all now uh, uh, refer to them as Kuki Zomi group mm -hmm. or Kuki Zo group. So Kuki Zomi group are uh, on the, they are the Kukis on the Manipur side are the Kukis. Then if you look uh, at them in the Mizoram side, which they border, which is they are the Zos, the Mizos. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and there's another border which is also attached to the Kuki areas, which is the Myanmar, Myanmar. side. So they are called Chin. So Myanmar has a Chin state, you see, that borders. So there are the people. So they are with all the same, same tribes, but spread across a different country similar, and ancestry. different states. Yes. So when this whole colonial era came and the borders were, uh, you know, demarcated, so many people became mm. part of, you know, so that, that kind of thing. And okay. what is the central grievance of the Central Kukis grievance right is that, that the Kukis are, have always been, uh, see, the mate, which let's start with the Meite thing because they are majority, they are 53% uh, of the state uh, population. Uh, so why is then a majority community so uh, upset and so, uh, uh, you know, insecure Angry. and demanding a scheduled tribe? Uh, kind of a status. Okay. So, because normally when you see in any state, no majority, uh, uh, mm. you know, we'll, we'll get that. So, uh, so now that, and they are also Vaishnavites. Mm. Okay. So some of them are OBCs and some of them are also, uh, you know, um, a scheduled uh, caste, but not uh, uh, um, try. So now that the demand has been there because of the fear is the land. Okay. As you pointed out, that there's only a little bit of land among the, uh, you know, where, where they're Métis homeland. And they cannot go and reside or buy land in, in the, the hill, areas. hill areas. Okay. And but which is uh, the other way around is possible. Okay. So then uh, there is a lot of overpopulation that is happening also. A. And uh, what role has the current government played? Because you have a BJP government there. Correct. Unprecedented shoot at site orders. Yes. Uh, no president rule. And yet you have a shoot at site order. Uh, some very disturbing scenes coming. What has been the BJP's role there? Yeah. So to start and with, special. you know, as you said, you know, Article 355 was invoked. But how do you do art, uh, invoke Article 355 without uh, precedence rule? When you look at, you know, this has never happened. This is unprecedented. So that brings up the question that, you know, BJP, uh, there's a BJP government there. So are you not then trying to, uh, um, um, you know, impose precedence rule? If it would have been some other government, would you have done it? So that question has remained in people's hmm. mind. So that's there. And then the other thing is also the chief minister. OK, you are also the home minister. And then it comes out in the open that when these rioters, these mobs, they actually looted uh, uh, police stations mm. and had taken away all uh, your uh, um, arms and ammunition and are going uh, crazy, killing people, fellow citizens. So you as the home minister, what are you doing? And also it brings us the question of a conflict within state where there is a lot of fear of militants. You know, there are a lot of these militants still operating. So then how is it that your police system is so weak? So that means if, if not these kind of mobs, anybody can take over you, you in, in a matter of hours. So mobs actually took over police stations. Exactly, exactly. Now they've been, yeah, so they have been, uh, uh, their arms have been uh, uh, taken away. And I've talked to a lot of victims, you know, in the Imphal area, and they say that the mob came dressed up as Manipur police commandos wow. in their outfit and with the helmets on. Okay, they only, uh, you know, I've said this, this is crazy, you know, I mean, like to be happening in a state like this. And yet the chief minister is not questioned. You know, a reassertion of uh, identities should not surprise, right? And all kind of rights should not surprise yes, us yes, anymore. Yes. Hmm. Uh, reassertion of identities always has a political undertone. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, this case will also be not be different because you see 62 people have died. See the previous riots that have happened, uh, the Delhi riots or Gujarat riots or 1984 mm. Sikh riots. See all of them, all of them, I mean, uh, more or less have political undertone. People die and no, uh, and if you see the judicial process that takes place, mm. uh, it takes years and years. So justice has never been done. So uh, to so to say that Home Minister was 
giving a speech in uh, Karnataka election. I mean, these things have become so mundane now. Even the riot has become part of our lives. Mm. Uh, so it has, uh, I mean, uh, Northeast has a history. Maitis, uh, maybe they want to reassert themselves, uh, you know, as a uh, scheduled tribe. But uh, I think more than the social, social, there may be a social reason. I'm not denying it at all. But ultimately, the politics take over and uh, kills everything. So that's yeah, what I. That, feel. That's so true. Yeah, mm. that's so true. Because what we are hearing now is a. I'm like I'm not saying this on, on my own. Lisa, like the the organization, the student body, which started this whole tribal solidarity march on March three, uh, from May third, and uh, uh, where the whole problem started. So this is a, a, a students body called All Tribal Students Union of Manipur at Sum. So yesterday they uh, issued a press statement uh, delineating what really led to the thing. And then particularly named two Manipuri, uh, two, two Meite uh, um, sub-nationalist groups. Okay, this is one um, Arambai uh, Tewong and uh, Meite Lipum. So the, these are directly linked to the chief minister because he visits there, he attends their events. And also the erstwhile king who is now with the BJP. All of you listening in, the Chota Hafta, do subscribe so you can listen to the entire Hafta. We will see you again next week with the Hafta. Till then, subscribe, pay to keep news free because when the public pays, the public is served and advertisers pay. Advertisers are served. Thank you. Goodbye. All the News Laundry podcasts are available on Stitcher, iTunes and any other podcast platform. Please subscribe to News Laundry. Help us keep news independent. To catch all our podcasts on news, pop culture, current affairs and sport, visit newslaundry.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Sunli Afrika, Mufat Khoro. Not to brag or anything, but News Laundry Hafta features in the top 50 in the world on SoundCloud in the news and politics category for podcasts. So do subscribe and see what you're missing because when the public pays, the public is served. When advertisers pay, advertisers are served. Subscribe, help keep news independent and free. All News Laundry podcasts are available on iTunes and Stitcher and any other podcast platform.